Now turning to our first story this lunchtime. An independent review is calling for fruit and veg on prescription and a tax on salt and sugar to help make healthy food options affordable in England. I spoke to Dr Naomi Maynard, Food Insecurity Lead Executive at Together Liverpool, to find out how big a barrier cost was to eating healthily. Yes, we know it's a huge barrier. Um, through our work with the City um, of Liverpool, we're working on a good food plan, and through that work we've spoken to 50 residents in the last couple of months who are all experiencing various levels of food insecurity, and this theme has come out really strongly. Um, so many of them articulated concerns about how they can't they can't afford to buy fruit and vegetables. Um, for example, we met a, a lady called Debbie who's in her late 40s, and she said... You know yourself how you feel when you're eating just processed stuff all the time. But if that's all you can afford, what else can you do? And and that was something that we found echoed by voices of residents in our city and, and echoes a lot of research that's been done um, across the country recently. I think what the report that's come out today does really well is express that connection between um, cheap, highly processed food, so food that's high in salt and sugar, um, how that might make you feel fuller for longer. And when you don't have um, lots of disposable income to spend on food, you're much more likely, therefore, to buy that kind of unhealthy food. It's also the food that your children are are more likely to eat. Um, And when you've not got loads of income to spend on things, you want to buy something that you know is going to fill them up. Um, One of the other things we've been seeing here in Liverpool, and, and it's true across the country, is that in areas with particular high levels of deprivation, um, they're m- more likely to be both what's called a food desert. So that means that there isn't lots of supermarkets or convenience stores where you can buy fresh fruit and veg in your area. Um, the walking distance might be too far if you're thinking with a mum with a buggy and a child in that buggy. They, they can't do a, a big shop. Um, they can't go very far for a big shop. So if there's not something in your area, there's not a place to, to buy that kind of food. Um, but areas such as such as that are also often food swamps. That means they have lots of um, fast food, kind of takeout, um, convenience stores, liquor stores, so places that are much more likely to sell um, things high in, in salt and sugar. So that makes it it's just lots harder to find affordable, healthy food options in these kind of areas. And I suppose, Naomi, this report is really hitting home with the public um, at this particular point in time because we're aware, you're mentioning there, areas of deprivation and we're mm-hmm. aware, very aware, that uh, COVID-19 has hit hardest in areas of deprivation, whether that's the disease itself or whether that's uh, job losses or people being furloughed and the like. And, and then we're hearing this about uh, food availability, healthy food availability. Uh, the government is being urged to have a tax on sugar and salt to raise revenue to help uh, do things like extend free school meals. The food industry is turning around and saying, well, actually, what you need to do is tackle poverty, not bring in a new tax. Are they both right? Is is one wrong or the other right? Does it need more than just one or the other to solve this problem? That's a great question. And I suspect they're both right. Um, I think What we are longing for the government to do is take really seriously the reasons why people are experiencing poverty. Um, It's it's reasons such as our safety net is just not strong enough at the moment. We want them to to make permanent the £20 uplift. That's an increase to benefits that's been happening during the pandemic. But we know that's been vital for lots of families. Please don't take that away. But we also want them to look seriously at at wages, um, campaigning for the real living wage and and to look at what living hours could mean. So we know lots of people who are in uh, food crises at the moment. Um, It's because they're on zero hours contracts and they don't know week to week how much money they're going to be taking home. And and that means it's really hard to budget. It's hard to be able to care for your family when you're in those kind of unsecure conditions. So we want the want the government to think about those reasons um but i suspect um from uh the public health point of view that it's, it is really important isn't it that we look at the salt and sugar intake that uh, people across our nation are having at the moment because that leads to dangerous rises in obesity and ultimately lower life expectancy which we saw in the report it, it said it was 9.5 years is the difference between a man living in one of the 
10 most affluent areas of the UK and a man living in one of the 10 most deprived areas of the UK. And that's just unacceptable. You mentioned at the start, just briefly, Naomi, what was happening in Liverpool, the conversations you'd had with um, 50 people in the city in the last few months uh, Mm -hmm. about their uh, eating habits and and the barriers to them eating healthily. And I guess this brings us down to what we in our communities, what the church in our communities can be doing to help people with this issue. There's quite a few things that our local churches can be doing right now to help people. Um, So one of the recommendations coming through in the strategy is calling on the government to invest in infrastructure to create local community food spaces. That's spaces such as food pantries, food clubs, social supermarkets, community kind of growing and and gardening spaces as well. Um, But actually lots of churches have already been doing this um, really well. What I'd recommend for churches right now to do is find out do you already have these spaces in your community? They might be, be run by your local community centre or another church down the road or another faith group. Can you partner with them? In Liverpool in the last year, we've had 11 new Your Local Pantry pantry staff. So they're, they're pantries, uh, many of which are based in, in our churches. That's brilliant. The other things churches can do um, coming out of this strategy is get involved in your local holiday activities and food programme. This is the government-funded program that's happening this summer at Christmas and at Easter um, to give children who are on free school meals uh, spaces to go to get involved in activities and have a healthy, nutritious meal as well. And then finally, the thing that all of, ch- all of us Christians um, can be doing is continue to campaign around the reasons why we see people in food insecurity. The strategy calls for the rise in the threshold for who receives free school meals this will make such a massive difference to millions of children. So we need to join our voices with the voices heard through this strategy. Dr Naomi Maynard from Together Liverpool. This is the Lunchtime News Roundup. I'm Dave Piper.